Hello and welcome to Sid Meier Civilization 6 Preview Edition. We are quite some ways into the game. We're up to 150 turns at 780 AD. And uh, just as a, a little side note here, a little uh, housekeeping if you will, the main game, the release of the game, is scheduled for this Friday, October 21st, which means that this preview edition is uh, going to be going away fairly quickly. Um, hoping to get a couple more uh, chunks of time in before before they switch off the preview and make the final knob adjustments as, as uh, Ed Beach uh, and Dave Shark uh, alluded to. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Still got a little bit of a cold. I apologize for that. But let's get let's dive right in. We are uh, again on our uh, continent, uh, all alone except for some city states um, out to the out to the east. We do have met um, one other uh, civilization, Norway, uh, who we met in the water. Uh, I believe he's somewhere out here to the west. Uh, and in uh, we have a delegate there uh, in his empire, and uh, in the discussions that he is having in his court we have determined that there is uh another there are at least two other countries nearby him but one is one is england we have not met them yet but what we're going to try and do is uh, focus our efforts on improving our our naval capacities and maybe finding that other continent so let's uh Let's keep plugging along. We've got uh, we've got our trade routes going well. We've got good gold. Our culture is high. Our <coughs> science is uh, we're working on that a little bit. We have um, some uh, great library and uh, some campuses out there to help us. Uh, we'll be probably building a university here pretty soon. Uh, but we're kind of content right now, and, and content is, in civilization is never good. So let's see what we can do here. Um, we've built a harbor already to help us to help us get out there. There's not really not really anything as far as um, uh, an improvement there. So let's uh, let's keep working on our. You know what monument? What the heck? It's a plus two on the culture. It, it'll take us five turns. We'll see what happens. And we've earned a new envoy. So we've got... So because we're the only ones here, basically, uh, we've got Toronto, we've got Laventa, and we've got Brussels, who are all basically allies. Uh, ally, allies. Allies. Yeah, they're metal. Um, basically, ally, ally, I did it again. Allies. There we go. Uh, we're going to try and uh, see if we can get Nan Mendal up there as well. So we'll uh, send our envoy there. Hey, I did it right that time. Also thinking about maybe building one more city down here to the south in this uh, little empty area here. My capital has uh, been complaining that um, we don't have enough housing. I can only do so much, people. You know, there's only there's only so much that uh, only so much so much I can concentrate on. So, uh, I I have uh, opportunity to change my district here uh, or change my production here. But let me let's take a look at one thing really quick. So let's go back to the tech tree um, here and. Shipbuilding is going to allow my land units to embark, which means they're, they're, it's going to get them out on the water. Now, that's going to take me five turns, um, and that's going to help me find those other um, the the other continent and the other civilizations. Also, uh, cartography um, is going to help me. Uh, it's going to give me greater movement, and plus, it's going to improve uh, my yield from fishing boats I'm going to I know we I know we talked about uh, going for um, military engineering and gunpowder eventually but you know what I'm gonna change 
I'm calling an audible. We're gonna we're gonna focus uh, the next couple next uh, handful of turns on uh, absolutely establishing an able presence. So we're gonna we're gonna go for shipbuilding, which is gonna be able to uh, allow me to embark my land units, and then we're gonna go for cartography. Um, and at this point, I, I'm okay not going for the frigate yet, because I'll eventually want to get back to the gunpowder. So, uh, let's see, at this juncture, my capital, can't build any wonders, uh, an aqueduct, an aqueduct would help with my housing issue that they're having, so let's, let's jump, jump to there, uh, that's going to... Remove the bananas. I don't want to do that. That's going to remove the stone. This is going to remove the rainforest. That's that's a farm. I know I didn't want to, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna and there's no more. No more I can buy. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna remove the rainforest. I know. I said earlier I didn't really want to do that. But sacrifices have to be made for the good of the. For the good of the country. We're gonna build our lighthouse up here to further our naval ambitions. We are by the grace of God Victoria, Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. And soon, dare I say, the Empire. And we've we've met England. Probably somewhere on the water there. Um, and Queen Victoria. And it is an honor to meet her. Uh, and I'm not too busy. So sit. Have some have some chat. Um, she's a proposing an exchange of ideas. That's fine. I'm good with that. Let's uh let's go back and take a quick peek at her on our turn. That leaves us with only one more civilization to find at this point. So let's go back see what see what um see what she's all about here. Uh we'll send out a delegation just so that I can maybe get a little more information on her. Though well, that's that's good that they're going to treat them with dignity. She looks kind of snotty, doesn't she? Maybe that's just the whole royalty thing. Yeah. You know, we, we give him a delegation. Eh, whatever. Um, so now we have uh, limited access. So we'll get a little bit of gossip about her. Her agenda is sun never sets. Uh, she wants to um, expand the classic British Empire. Um, so she's not going to be fond of me right now because she doesn't have... Um, any cities on my continent and yes I've claimed that continent um, and she's currently uh, with the classical republic uh, government um, she has an unfriendly relationship with Harold the Norwegian empire leader um, so let's let's just see what uh, wow she's she's pretty big just look at all those cities Five cities, quite a bit of luxury resources, and, and uh, a couple good strategic resources. She's got the horses, and she, and she has iron. Um, her gold is a little limited, so that, that may play into something further down the line where I can offer her cash for maybe something that I want later. Well, let's move on. And yes, my delegate is telling me that uh, England has received a foreign delegation, and it, it is myself. So my delegate has arrived safely, and I feel, I feel good about that. Victoria has built the pyramids, which is fine. I, I, don't, I don't think I want the pyramids. I don't think I have a place to build them right now anyway. So I'm okay with that. Although, you know, that's a wonder that I don't have that now she has. So fix that. Oh, there's, there's, there was England right there. At the very top north part of the screen. A lot of action. 
activity going on that absolutely does not impact me whatsoever. So, let's see. We're one turn away from shipbuilding, so we'll, we want to keep that in mind as well. Um... Uh, this is a tough choice here. Let's let's build my um, Nago Mambiba unit, my unique unit. One because you know you can never be too strong. Well, you can, I guess, when it starts depleting your finances like it was earlier for us. But two, in case I run into something uh, untoward, as I decide to investigate other continents. And it, it, by by wanting to investigate other continents, I'm not I'm not intentionally, I'm not, it is not my purpose to go out there and, and do conquering or warring or anything like that, but it does open up new trade routes, new agreements for science. Um, so, you know, it's not just, a, you know, I want to beat up everybody in the world. Um, We've got a banking boost, that's good. Your Grace, if I may, I think it is time that we begin exploring what is beyond our shores. It may be that our land units would be fit for this opportunity. So we're going to reactivate, if they're not already, our scouts to send them uh, in the direction of the, um, of the potential continent. Our treasury is filled with gold. And I think it could be wise to make an investment. Perhaps we could expand our military. I cannot imagine any condition which would cause a ship to founder. Modern shipbuilding has gone beyond that. And that quote from the captain of the RMS Titanic. Oh boy. Sometimes, sometimes the quotes are very much tongue-in-cheek. Uh, we've got a classical uh, ranged naval unit. Um, it's it's uh, basically an advance on the galley and we can build the uh build the colossus wonder now and we've got a couple of harbors um and we are on a coast and not a lake so that would be good having and it will help us not only with uh trade gold but it also um advances us towards the great admiral every man should make his son learn some useful trade or profession so that in these days of changing fortunes they may have something tangible to fall back upon. And if you don't recognize the the uh, the author of that quote, it's P.T. Barnum, Barnum Bailey. Um, we get another wonder here with guilds. Um, it has to be built on the rainforest, and I think we're still okay on that. Uh, we have our unique district, the Mbanza, um, which replaces the neighborhood. It also gives it to us sooner than other than other uh, civilizations get their neighborhood districts, which will help us with housing um, and increasing our uh, population. An economic policy, um, two of them actually, one with the industrial zone, one with the commercial hub, and a, um, a wildcard policy that will increase our great merchant points. So let's go ahead and take a look and, and maybe, um, we're not ready to change government yet. We haven't found those yet. So, let's see. We're doing two scientist points here. We're increasing our culture with our economic policy. Our military policy is still... We're still pretty good. Um, the new economic policies really don't appeal to me at this point yet. Um, so, we're, we're fine. We do get to choose a new civic. So... Let's, uh, let's see what's out there. Naval tradition would be good. Um, medieval fairs. Your Renaissance fair. Um, we could go for, um, exploration. Which, uh, is, again, more geared towards that naval... Uh, outcome that we're looking for, we're to, uh, and that gets us into the Renaissance era. That's going to take some time to really build up, though. 
but you'll never get there unless you try. So let's let's do that. Let's um, we could go with naval tradition first, and then maybe maybe work towards that exploration. So let's do that. Let's go for naval tradition, which will give us a couple new policies. Um, again, uh, mainly towards the naval the naval areas. So we did have a a scout up here. Let's start working him in this direction. Um, we also have a couple military units, and this may be problematic. I maybe maybe just you know buzzing the tower kind of thing, but we'll see what happens. had too many barbarian uh, outbreaks so I'm fairly comfortable in, in possibly sending my units out we're hitting the high seas with uh, my military units and my and my scout. And we'll see what we can find when we get up there. We got a boost on military engineering. Always Blast! Build! Battle! Military engineering gives me um, a military engineer, which is a support unit. It's, uh, it helps build uh, additions to roads, forts, forts and airships. Um, again, it's not a unit that will attack. It's, it's merely a support unit. And we have an armory building that we can build in either um, our encampment an encampment district, but we have to have uh, a barracks or stable first. And now we um, can start... Oh, we have a... <laughs> plus two culture is good. Plus one production is also good. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it's going to wipe out one of my rainforests. Um, I'm going to pick one that's kind of not near anything else so that it doesn't take away any potential bonuses from, from the rainforest in that area. Um, but that's uh, another wonder in our... could be another wonder in our, in our arsenal. And uh, we can always use the culture bonuses. We're doing well in culture. And there's Norway with their Viking longship. A unique unit for them. Probably gives them additional additional movements, uh, things along those lines. Now, because my units are embarked and I have not learned cartography yet, I'm only going to be able to get so far. I can only I can only go on uh, coastal areas. But hopefully this will this will give me um, an idea of. I mean, they could reach me, so there has to be. I would think. Well, though, you know, probably with the the Viking longship, and probably with because England is big in the navy, they probably have uh, a, a unique unit there as well. So I may not be able to get to them yet until I learn cartography, which we are currently studying right now. Um, and cartography will allow me to use my embarked units on uh, on the ocean. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm just gonna be stuck here on the coastline. I mean, not bad. It's okay. Um, I, they really would like to be further out, I'm sure, as we all would. We'd all like to be further along. But until I can until I can navigate the ocean blue, so Norway has progressed from the classical area era to the medieval era. Uh, not unexpected. A good navy is not a provocation to war. It is the surest guarantee of peace. Theodore Roosevelt. We get, uh, as we said before, uh, advantages towards uh, great admiral points. And harbor 
uh, uh, adjacency bonuses. So our next civic, um, military tradition only takes one turn. So let's go ahead and just get that in the middle. And we got a new envoy. And now we'll be able to uh, make a suzerain of of uh, Nan Mendal. Um, and that's going to give me a plus two culture in every theater square district. So I'm going to have to start building theater squares, which is fine. But all the uh, four out of the five are now, I'm now suzerain, uh, which is kind of like the de facto leader. Um, without actually leading. Um, and, uh, but if, if for some reason war were to occur or, uh, you know, I got attacked by an enemy, by a barbarian, I have, they have my back. And I feel good about that. Bravery is being the only one who knows you're afraid. So military tradition, it was one turn. Uh, that's going to give me um, production uh, benefits towards um, cavalry units and uh, uh, great general points. Uh, and I have to pick a new civilization. Or a new civilization. So um, it appears... Norway's way back there. Uh, I'm not sure where England is yet. All right, let's go. Let's go ahead. We want to. We want, talked about going for the uh, exploration civic. Uh, again, that's going to take some some backfill here. Uh, military training, a couple turns. Medieval fairs, six turns. Mercenaries, five turns. So that's going to take a little bit of work, but uh, again, it's going to give me uh, naval boosts, naval bonuses that I was looking for in the beginning. So now we have um, an opportunity to... I could, I could build another trader. I want to hold off on that, though, because I want to wait until I can navigate some of the ocean. Before I went before a trader, because that would be if I can get a naval trade route, that would be um, even better. So let's go ahead and, and uh, again, as as we've talked about before, if you have a unique oppor a unique unit opportunity or a unique district opportunity, you should try and take advantage of that as much as possible, uh, because it's generally a, a big bonus for uh, for you. So, let's see. I could do it close by. I'm going to lose uh, woods, rainforest there, woods. Uh, okay, not there. Um, I, I'd rather lose woods than, than rainforest. So, let's go ahead and build that uh, unique district here. And again, that's going to give me... Um, once it's, once it's completed, it's going to give me bonuses towards population, towards food, towards housing. So it's a definitely a city, a city bump. Um, now I could go for the theater square because, as we as we noted, the one of the city states is going to give me bonus culture based on uh, based on this theater square. How are we doing on housing? Oh, we're fine on housing. Amenities are good. So the unique Mombasa district uh, really doesn't, it's not pressing. So let's go ahead and uh, let's check down here. No, nothing. Um, let's go ahead and build that theater square so we can get that bonus. And we have one, two districts where we can actually get an additional bonus because we're next to the great uh, lighthouse mother. So we'll go ahead and build the theater square there. And there was much rejoicing. Um, and it's, you know, it's a good thing to have the theater district out for us, uh, um, you know, uh, visual purposes um, over the water. I don't know why, it just feels that way. Um, our new unit will just set to explore. Our scout 
Looking for a place to go. Oh, he blocked. That's why I had to redo that. You tread on dangerous waters in the face of England and her loyal colonies. Yeah, she's really snotty. You're going down. Uh, <laughs> it's funny how, you know, you attach uh, personalities. I mean, that's her personality. Uh, it, you know, back back when during her reign, uh, it was all about um, colonization and it was all about expansion of, of England and um, England's ideals and territories and everything else. Um, I don't know why she, it's, I don't know why she's upset with me, but that's fine. You know, nobody really likes me anymore. I'm just trying to be a nice guy. Uh, not gonna happen. I missed what that delegate was. Probably. Let's just see. Um. Oh, probably this. That uh, Eng England now has a religion, a new religion, Protestant, Protestant, Protestantism. Sorry, just not really talking well today. But the game is playing well. Um, a lot of excitement. And and there there are, you know, we've always we've always in the past. There's a, there's been one of the complaints about you know the dreaded mid mid game lull. I I don't think we've hit that yet. Those who in quarrels interpose must often wipe a bloody nose. Military training is going to give me. Uh, couple military policies pillaging um, and um, production towards encampment um, but the mid game the mid game lull um, has always been talked about with other other civilizations we, I, we may not have hit mid game yet but it doesn't feel like I'm in any kind of lull there's there's still a lot of activity there's still a lot of things for me to do um, the districts help with that I think because it, it it forces you to to continually evolve your cities and expand them and consider your possibilities in the future and what benefits you want to get out of it. So I think that works really well. I am building envoys like crazy. Now I can right now I have when when you get to three you get that you know unique bonus. I could go to six, start building towards one of these towards six, which gives me additional whatever's additional production additional faith additional science um even even greater than what i already have now uh or you know i can just try and be friends with everybody you know they're not bugging me they're protecting my east uh, my eastern flank um we've worked well together in the past i feel confident in them uh, and hopefully they feel confident in them. Okay, this is England. Uh, I knew this was going to happen. Um, yay, Renaissance. Not all who wander are lost. And a Tolkien quote, always appreciate it. So what, that's, what, what that has done, what cartography does is, as you can see, my scout can now, uh, my land unit as the scout, can now go out into the ocean. Um... And I knew that eventually, in the, in the near future, that England was going to send somebody over here to try and settle in this new continent. That may become a problem a little bit later on. We'll see. We'll see how much. One, I may be able to tolerate. Two, you know, it's my continent. I, I founded it. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna automate our settle our scout, and he's gonna go go explore. Toronto has given me a new quest. Actually, I'm working on that. So, well done, Toronto. We, we worked together on that one. Um, let's open up the tree again. And now we can, now that I feel like uh, I'm more of a naval presence, I'm going to go back to the gunpowder. Um, we're going to need to get uh, stirrups first. And then, uh, and then gunpowder. Although... See, this is what happens. There's choices to be made. You start thinking, you know, it's... I, I want to I want to get that crossbowman unit. I want to improve my archers even a little bit uh, just because I, I feel like that I'm maybe getting to a point where that may be necessary. So let's go ahead and do that first. And then if... It, I, I can go ahead and set gunpowder. What you would do is, is hold down the shift key and then click on the new thing and what that does is just add to 
the the list of technologies or the list of civics that you want to um, inquire about and research. So we're going to go ahead and get uh, the machinery technology so that we can get the crossbowman unit, which is a little stronger. A little, um, their range is, is the same, but they're a stronger unit, a uh, stronger melee unit as well. And then we'll go up to stirrups and get uh, a knight. Um, I think I already have iron, so we can do that. And then we can get to our musket, musket man, in the Renaissance era. Our military is not quite as advanced as our civics, uh, and so that's something I definitely want to try and rectify before it becomes a problem. So as you can see, my <laughs> all my naval units or all my units are. are heading towards the west because that's new territory for them um, shock and amazement England has switched to a monarchy um, not also not uh, too unexpected Awe viator Augusta e Roma imperator caesar traianus sum quis es qua terra patria vocas Rome and Greece will always uh, hold a special place in my heart I personally have studied Latin studied Latin uh, many many years in the past so I, I I'm not saying that I can speak the language because it's a dead language anyway and it's one of the most difficult languages I think to try and learn <laughs> um, I'm having flashbacks oh god um, but it's it's neat to hear the language and and to hear um, touches of the Latin uh, in there so Rome is our third and final civic uh, civilization in uh, in this world. Um, no, we were not found by lost Trojans, or my children were not raised by wolves, and that's a historical reference. Um, but I, I wanted to try and nobody else likes me. Maybe maybe Rome will like me. You know, I, you know, I like pizza. Um, so we've uh, we've found we've discovered our new civilization. Uh, we've also discovered a new continent, and let's uh, let's take that moment uh, to come over here. And in the lower left-hand corner is the mini map, and as you can see, we've only discovered the fully discovered this one uh, continent. Um, we see over here uh, uh, to the west uh, areas that we obviously haven't. Um, but there are what what they call lenses and what this does is, is it shows you the areas of influence for example um, Well, we have no religion over here, so it's not gonna really show me anything But this shows me the different continent uh, plates So this is all one continent sometimes they divide continents like they divide a landmass into separate continents um, And you get bonuses for discovering new continents uh, my continent is called Avalonia. Uh, the one I'm headed towards is called America. Shocking. That's almost like, you know, Europe and whatever. Um, shows the appeal, you know, where a, a good place to build, possibly build a new city where people like it. Um, I have uh, the settler, and, and that shows the water table uh, locations, as we saw when we, when we were building those. Um, your political shows the outlines uh, and then your governments. Um, Kabul is a different government. As is okay, that's interesting. Anyway, but this these are helpful to you know, as particularly uh, in the religion area because that shows you the areas of influence. So you can if you have a religion and you're trying to promote it and trying to um, expand it. You can see where you're where you're kind of running up against another religion, and you might want to f focus your efforts in those areas. And we found a tribal village. Where? Oh, there it is. So we'll we'll send our scout there. And there is a new city state. Probably not one that um, that uh, I've discovered first, but Geneva is a uh, is a it appears to be a scientific kind of looks like it. Yeah, scientific. 
Uh, what do they want us to do? They want us to have a boost for diplomatic services. Well, we'll see about that. But but no one is uh, no one has claimed them. Um, no one is their suzerain, which is good to know. There's London, so we found where England is, and there's Rome. I have not seen um, Norway's capital. That's interesting. I wonder if they perhaps lost their capital in a in a skirmish. Let's talk to Harold again. Harold, what do you know? Hey, buddy. Um, he's still not happy with me. Uh, let's see. He has no other cities, so he's he's limited to one city. That's uh, it's not too impressive, bud. You may want to be nicer to me. And already, Rome is uh, unhappy with me. What did I do to you already? It was the pizza joke, wasn't it? Um, Rome wants to have as much territory as possible. The Roman Empire, the stretch of the Roman Empire across much of Europe in their heyday. And parts of uh, even the British Isles. Um, does not like... Um, does not like uh, people who don't have a whole lot of territory. So he's probably not happy. With, no, not happy with Harold. But he is. Uh, he and uh, England apparently are uh, are not on good speaking terms. Um, they've denounced each other, or at least he's denounced her. Let's see if the. Oh, man! If they're if they're rejecting your delegation already, uh, they've got an attitude and they've got uh, an agenda, and probably their agenda is. Is that sword on on his hip? Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, Rome is a has a greater population, but not as good of defense. Uh, you can see, uh, for example, in London and and not in Geneva and other cities as well. The eight is their population, uh, but above is um, their garrison strength. Uh, and fifty nine is uh, pretty powerful. Uh, compared to Rome, which only has 37. So, uh, Rome might want to try and beat you just with uh, the numbers. So, we'll see what happens. Um, our scout, let's go ahead and uh, have him explore some more. Here's some more uh, England units. That, that uh, English settler vanished. That worries me. Okay, so now I have uh, another trade. This is a trade route that has expired, so I have an opportunity to reestablish it. We'll send him. I think he was already going to Brussels anyway before, so we're going to do that again. I like the gold. I like the production. Uh, either one of those things that I can continue to help uh, beef up my treasury. And there is the English city, right next to mine. <sighs> We're gonna have to have words, I can tell. And we can have words. Uh, I'll show you here in a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, say something to her about that because that's that's not cool. That's remember that people cool break down too, not just machinery. So now we get our, we can boost our uh, archery units and make them crossbowmen, um, and we also get the lumber mill. Uh, benefit which is uh, production based so let's go ahead and uh, have a chat with uh, uh, oh not gonna let us the, as you can see on the left hand side there are there are specific things you can do and uh, then there's a one that will crop up every once in a while um, that will allow you to discuss certain things and generally uh, it may take me a turn maybe um, you can, if somebody settles near you or somebody expands a religion near you or their, their troops are surrounding your cities, you can try and talk them out of it. And sometimes they're nice about it. Other times they want to get, you know, belligerent and, um, ignore anything, any requests you might have. Uh, so I can build another great writer. Always a good thing. Um, and I'm going to start putting them, um, 
the great works in my capital. Out of this room, there was a passage into the Emperor's bedchamber. The walls whereof were of jet, and the floor of black marble. The roof was of mother of pearl, where the moon and blazing stars were represented by white diamonds, and his bed was made of diamonds and carbuncles. It's gotta be a really uncomfortable bed. So I have, um, I also can also put a great work in the amphitheater, but I'm going to fill up my palace slot. Uh, although only writing can go here, whereas I have variety here. So I may, the next one I may move to the, uh, to the amphitheater. As a matter of fact, let's just walk him in that direction. So we uh, have recruited everything that we can, but it's telling me I need to claim a great person. I have already done that. Uh oh, we may have hit a we may have hit a game break. Oh, this would be unfortunate. No. Can I push forward somehow? That's unfortunate. Okay, so what we've hit, so we've hit a game break, which means that w the game will not let us progress anymore, uh, because it's telling me I've earned a great person and I need to choose whether to accept or pass on that. However, if I go to the great person's um, page, I, there are, there are none for me to accept or pass. Wow. Okay. Uh, we can... We can try and reload a previous autosave. So let's do... Oh man, that's, that's not cool. Um, and there's no way... Okay, it's, it's letting me, if I click on specific things, it lets me do it. Um, nope. It, I, it, trying, I was trying to use the shortcut for... Um, um, yeah, nope. Wow, well, that's... Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, but again, remember, this is a preview build, so it's probably one of the things that they'll tweak and fix. That's um, so. Let's try. Let's try um, uh, loading an auto save. Uh, let's see. Let's pick 170 just for fun. Do I think I want to turn 170? 172. Let's just check really quick. Uh, on turn 172. So let's let's go back a couple turns and uh, and see what happens. See if we still get that problem. That's it, it, and from the first stirrings happens. of life beneath water to the great beasts of the Stone Age to man taking his first upright steps. You have come far. So where were we? Uh, we'll automate that guy. We have to establish our trade route again. Um, hopefully, hopefully we can get past. There's the English settlement. Um, I'm kind of crossing my fingers. I hope you are too, because... Remember that people break down too, not just machinery. We really, really want to get past this. Okay. Uh, claiming my great person. I wonder if I passed on them, what would happen? Let's try and recruit one more time, and then maybe if that doesn't work... Okay, so we've recruited him. Uh, actually, it's a her. Margaret Cavendish. We're going to send them out to, and no, it's still saying I need to, bummer. All right, that didn't work. 
Uh, we have one more thing to try. Um, let's go ahead and again load that that autosave. And what we'll do next time. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. What we'll do this time is pass on it and see if that maybe gets us past that little break point there. So, take care of those two things. Watch England settle up here. <laughs> Feels like deja vu all over again. Um, wait for them to tell me I have a great person that I've earned. I'd imagine the whole world is one big machine. We've heard that before. We already know what it is. All right, so we're going to, instead of recruiting, we're going to pass. Um, and what this does is, if, if for some reason you didn't want that person, maybe you didn't have room for a great writer work, uh, so you just pass. What that does is it allows um, other... Uh, civilizations to get that particular great writer at a discount. Um, I, it, it costs me some of my great person, great people points, uh, but it does not limit me. It doesn't mean that I can never ever get a great writer again. So let's pass. Oh my God, please work. Nope. Oh. Oh. Unfortunate. We have hit. We have hit the wall. Um, the marathon uh, has reached 20 miles and we've hit the wall. That's unfortunate. Um, I'm sorry. I, it, but again, it is a preview copy. Um, it's not fully fully um, workable at this point. I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just trying to explain why we've hit this wall. Um, obviously, there's something in the code. Uh, hopefully... Um, some guys at for access will be uh, taking a look at it, at that um, and um, we'll see what happens but remember the full game comes out on the 21st and we will have uh, I'll, I'll be continuing these uh, videos obviously we'll start a brand new game with the full unit um, the full game differences uh, 20 civilizations possible um, all different types of maps different uh, uh, difficulty curves um, obviously all the tweaks and, and changes that they're going to make before the final copy uh, is ready you can pre-order it now as a matter of fact I think uh, on Monday they said that if you did pre-order through Steam you can already start downloading you can't play it yet mind you but you can start downloading so I thank you uh, for for uh, sticking with me for this, I apologize again for the for the um, for the sudden abrupt halt. Um, we were probably going to have to stop anyway soon with the uh, preview uh, build uh, coming to an end. Um, maybe that's maybe that's why we've uh, we've hit this wall. But we will definitely come back and uh, and take a look again at uh, Civilization Six. Um, and I uh, hope you join me then. Thank you.